Equalization can improve your audio by raising the frequencies you want to hear more of and reducing the frequencies you want to hear less of. Audacity offers equalization. Reaper offers a free equalization plugin called Rea EQ. Also, Tokyo Dome Records offers an equalizer called Nova that is available in a free version as well as a paid version. The equalization program I will use to demonstrate equalization in this tutorial is IIEQ Pro. The advantage to not using Audacity's equalization and using an equalization program like IIEQ Pro or TDR Nova is that you can make changes in your EQ real time as the audio is playing. There are many video tutorials on YouTube teaching you how to EQ voice audio. You can use Audacity to equalize the audio, or you can get a plug-in such as IIEQ Pro or TDR Nova. Free equalization programs that you can download and use without charge are Rhea EQ by Reaper and TDR Nova by Tokyo Dawn Records. First, what I'll do is go ahead and open IIEQ Pro. I just go up here to Effect, VST, IIEQ Pro. And you'll see down here a few windows. You see the band, and you set the filter type. And this will show you the dB that you're boosting or cutting. This will show you the frequency that your band is on. This will tell you the Q, which is basically the curve. So these are the basic readings, and you have a lot of other buttons here that you'll learn if you get this program. And for every audio recording, you'll always want to set up a high-pass filter and a low-pass filter. I have seen where people only set up a high-pass filter, but I recommend setting up both a high-pass filter and low-pass filter. And if you did nothing else as far as EQing a file, always just set up a high-pass filter and a low-pass filter. So first, let's set up a high-pass filter. And in this particular program, you can just left-click here, and you know, and you could choose a particular band type, and you can either choose it here by left-clicking, and we want a high-pass filter. This is high-pass filter 24. You also have high-pass filter 12. So 12 looks like that. And if we go back and change it, we could just right click on this one also to change it to HPF24, which is high pass filter 24. You notice it's a little bit sharper curve. And this is one I tend to favor the HPF24 or the high pass filter 24. It's got a little bit sharper curve to it. Now, the frequency you want to set is 80. And there's a couple of ways you can set it. You can drag this till it reaches 80. Or you can simply just click it right here and change it to 80. Now, what this high pass filter does, all this noise is going to be cut out. There's not many audio sounds that you can hear in a human voice that's below 80 hertz. Now, some people like to set it at 50, because they believe there's some of the human voice, even below 80 down to 50. And some people like to even go up to as high as 120. And some people like to use 100. 
But the general consensus is that 80 is where you should set it. And if you want to experiment with it, as you're playing the audio, you can drag this up higher. And if the voice is not affected in any way, that means it's okay to set it a little bit higher. You may drag it up to, say, 96, 97, and the voice still sounds okay, and no changes. Well, you may be able to go up to 100 hertz on this. But I'd recommend just go to general opinion of 80 hertz here and experiment with a higher hertz if you'd like to. So that's our high pass filter. Now I want to set a low pass filter and we do it the same way. We just click here and we can either select it here or we can actually right click on this little dot and we set a low pass filter, either 12 or a 24 low pass filter. See, this is a 12. Now, if I go over here and set 24, you see it's a little bit sharper. Let's just go with a 24. Now, we need to set our frequency. Now, the frequency on a low pass filter, you want to set it somewhere between 10,000 and 20,000. And just to split. The difference, I use 15,000, and you could either drag this to put it on 15,000 or simply just click that and enter 15,000. So now we have a high pass and a low pass filter. And you for sure need to be wearing headphones. In fact, I'm going to put my headphones on right now. And when you use an equalizer, I would say that headphones would be a must. Because you can't hear that well with just two speakers. There's too many outside sounds that's getting through to where you just can't distinctly EQ properly without a set of headphones. So I'm going to put my headphones on here. Now, just to show you the difference. Just a high pass filter and a low pass filter makes. I'm going to play a little bit of this file here, and we have the high pass filter and low pass filter set. So I click on play. Too many people spend money they haven't earned. That's with to buy things they don't. I'm going to click want this to impress people. That's they without don't like Will Rogers. So this is without simplicity. Is the Ultimate sophistication. And this is with Leonardo da Vinci. So you can see how it greatly improved the audio doing nothing else but setting up a high pass filter and a low pass filter. Now, if you want to do some more EQ, I'm going to show you how a lot of people EQ their audio, and it's called EQ sweeping. What you do it's just set up another band and raise it up, and you narrow the Q. Now, the Q is a curve, and here's the Q, and it's easy to narrow the Q. You just put your cursor here and use your mouse wheel, and you want to narrow Q, and you want to listen for sounds that are negative up here, and then once you find the negative sound, you want to drag this down and cut. So if you get below this line, you're cutting. And if you get above that line, you're boosting. And you primarily want to be concerned with cutting more so than boosting. I've heard recommendations that when you do cut, it should be around 3 dB down here. But use your ears. It may be a circumstance where you need greater than 3 dB. The professionals will call it training your ears. So once you train your ears, you'll hear audio imperfections and know the audio. Sounds a little muddy. I need to take that out. It's got a little reverb in it. I need to take that out. It's got some sibilance in it. Let me see if I can take some of that sibilance out. But that will be something you can learn as you go. Now, 
first we have to listen to the audio. And right in here, you might find some boxy or muddy sounds. You might find some reverb sounds in here, some sibilants in here. And let's just go ahead and play this file and see if we can find some negative sounds that we want to cut. So I'm going to click on play. Too many people spend money they haven't Bring this earned up. to buy things and they don't. And this is sweeping, sweep back and forth. They don't like. Will Rogers. Now, a lot of simplicity. I have is the ultimate. See where people suggest you'd sweep around nine. Leonardo DB Da Vinci. But I just bring it all the way up. I can hear those negative sounds better. Your life. The laws of the universe will be simpler. Solitude will not be solitude. Okay, that sounds a little boxy right there. Not be poverty. So I'm going to bring it down at the same location. Henry David Thoreau. Cut some of that boxiness out. I may widen the the cue a little bit. You see? Is not found in seeking So that's more. one adjustment. Now let's see but if we can see. Developing well, actually see if we can hear. To enjoy. Some other sounds we might want to take out. Socrates. Truth is ever to be found in simplicity. And not in the multiplicity and confusion of things. Isaac Newton. In order to seek one's own direction, one must simplify the mechanics of ordinary hear a little sound everyday that life. I'll take out right here, so let's Plato. drag this down. It's kind of life is a preparation we'll for the future. Widen that cue out a little bit. And the best preparation for the future is to live as if there now, that's none. about the only two changes I'm going to make, but I'm going Albert to show you Einstein. how you might want to make some other changes depending on Does your audio. Life? Then, do not squander time. I'm going to stop this from playing in a second. But if you set up another band here to listen, then again... Narrow that cue. Sometimes you can find some sibilance in this area and maybe some more reverb in this area. And if you do, you can just do, just like we did on these two noises, you can cut it. And not only can you listen for things you want to cut, you might listen for some good sounds that you actually, oh, that sounds, that sounds, makes it sound a little bit better. So you can actually. Boost it. Now, if you need your audio to be a little bit more brilliant sounding or bring clarity to it, you can bring a band up in this like in this area a little bit, or you can. Set up a high chef right here. And just raise it, not too much. You see, we've raised it 3.91 decibels. And you'll find that adjusting it and playing with it, you'll bring more clarity to your audio. Now, you can... Bring it up too high, and it will not improve your audio. So, but I like the audio way I have it. But I'm just showing you for your use. If you ever want to bring some more clarity, you could either bring a high chef here, or just have a band, a peak, come up here and play with it and see where you want to have more clarity. Now, if you need a little bit more bass, 
or you want a little bit deeper sound to it, you can set up a low chef over here and play with it and see how that affects your bass. So I'm going to take that off. So this is how I'm going to EQ this particular audio file. Now after I have the settings that I like, at this point I would select the portion of the file that I want to EQ. And in this case I want to EQ the entire file. So I go up to select, click on all. The entire file has been selected. And after I've selected the entire file, I click on apply. It'll take a few seconds here. And then our audio file would have been equalized with these settings. You see toward the end, the waveforms will change a little bit. So we now have an equalized file. Now I'm going to give you some generalities and some basics of what frequencies you might want to use this EQ sweeping on. And I'm going to show you a list of frequencies. It's just entitled Suggestions to EQ Your Voice Audio. So we've talked about the high pass filter. And we've talked about the low pass filter. Now for clarity, you may want to cut 100 to 300 hertz for more clarity. And to remove muddiness, cut somewhere between 300 and 400 hertz to remove muddiness. If you have some reverb in your audio, you want to cut 300 hertz to 1,000 hertz. In other words, you would sweep in this range from 300 hertz to 1,000 hertz and find a section that had reverb and then cut it. And if you want to boost in a range of 2,000 to 6,000 to enhance clarity, you can boost that. And your sibilant sounds, like your S's and your shrill sounds that come from saying S's, you can cut in a range of 3,000 hertz to 5,000 hertz to reduce sibilant sounds. And here's an important point. You can experiment with EQ sweeping. I think everyone has a little bit different idea of what audio should sound like to them. And so it'll be similar, but not everybody will be EQing the same. You just have to, again, train your ears and just work with your equalizer and experiment until you feel comfortable that you're improving your audio. I can say that I'm not an audio expert when it comes to using an equalizer, but I can say that using an equalizer does make my audio sound better. So that would be a goal for you to achieve and simply just setting up a high pass filter and a low pass filter. You've already seen how that can improve your audio, even if you did no other EQ. So that's just a general basic explanation of how you can use an equalizer on your audio file. Please visit our website, opportuno.org, for more items that may be of interest to you. Thanks for watching.